It's common to want to create several Swift UI views inside a loop. For example, we might want to loop over an array of names and have each one be a text view, or loop over an array of menu items and have each one be shown as an image. Swift UI gives us a dedicated view type for this purpose, called for each. This can loop over arrays and ranges, creating as many views as needed. Even better, for each doesn't get hit by the same 10 view limit that would affect us if we'd typed the views by hand. For each will run a closure once for every item it loops over, passing in the current loop item. For example, if we loop from 0 to 100, it would pass in 0, then 1, then 2, and so on. For example, this creates a form with 100 rows. Form, for each, 0 to 100, number in, text, row, string interpolation, number. Because for each passes in a closure, we can use shorthand syntax for the parameter name, like this, row, string interpolation, dollar zero. For each is particularly useful when working with SwiftUI's picker view, which lets us show various options for users to select from. To demonstrate this, we're going to define a view that, first, has an array of possible student names, second, has an at state property, storing the currently selected student, third, creates a picker view asking users to select their favorite student using a two-way binding to the at state property, and fourth, uses for each to loop over all possible student names, turning them into a text view. Here's the code for that. Let students equals an array of Harry, Hermione, Ron. At state, private var selected student equals Harry. Then inside the body, we'll say picker, select your student, selection, dollar selected student. For each, zero up to less than students.count, text, self.students, dollar zero. There's not a lot of code in there, but it's worth clarifying a few things. First, the students array does not need to be marked with at state, because it's a constant, it isn't going to change. Second, the selected student property starts with a number zero, but can change, which is why it's marked with add state. Third, the picker has a label, select your student, which tells users what it does, and also provides something descriptive for screen readers to read aloud. Fourth, the picker has a two-way binding to selected student, which means it'll start showing a selection of zero, but update the property as a user moves the picker. Fifth, inside the for each we count from zero, up to but excluding the number of students in our array. And sixth, for each student we create one text view showing that student's name. We'll look at other ways to use ForEach in the future, but that's enough for this project. This is the final part of the overview for this project, so it's almost time to get started with the real code. If you want to save the examples you've programmed, you should copy your project directory somewhere else. When you're ready, put contentview.swift back to the way it started when you first made the project so we have a clean slate to work from.